Paris thing. She don't have a date. She leaves for Paris tomorrow. Yeah, I'm driving up some old country road for some stupid publicity stuff. It's not a stunt. Publicity sells pictures. Yeah, yeah, I know all about it. Fan magazines for the emotionally starved masses. Take it easy, son. I know your whole pitch word for word. All right, but listen to this, and it's not a pitch. Your public image stinks. How long do you think you can get away with bad press? All right, that's enough, Simon. No, you're going to listen. 25 grand to have a drop the charges. And that balloon test you couldn't pass in L.A. I said that's enough. <laughs> you all right? Yeah, yeah. I must have the only star around with Angina who thinks every night is New Year's Eve. Look, Purvis, you got to take it easy. Now, we've come a long way. I've got Johnson and the network in the bag for eight horror movies for television for this season. But you know how they operate. One bad move and they can cancel out an Amoris clause. Look, I've worked a long time on this one and we got a big chunk of the action. You'll be bigger than Boris Karloff. All right, Simon, I get the point. I'll be a good boy. What's the deal? Two old ladies. Bigger fans and big ones. Oh, they got scrapbooks, photographs, articles, everything on you ever since you started acting. Where'd you dig them up? I didn't. That's the beauty of it. They're legit. They wrote to me. The network loved the idea. Hey, listen, we may even get a spread in Life magazine. The photographers are going to meet us at their house. Uh, I couldn't be better. We can change your personal image in one shot. Two old ladies who love you. Just two old ladies who love me, huh? Anything else you want to call Mr. Harris? No, uh, I think we cover that pretty good. Peterson, that's a wrap. Oh, you're not leaving already. Seems like you only just came. I'm afraid I have to. I have a production meeting. We start shooting the first thing in the morning. Oh, but we want him to autograph our collection. Oh, that's okay. Mr. Green will do that. Oh, please, Mr. Green. For the ladies, Purvis. Oh, of course. I'd be very happy to. Oh, that's marvelous. Ellie will fetch the album, and I'll serve you some tea. Thanks a lot. Uh, five more minutes won't kill you. Hey, we got some pretty good stuff. Remember, we have a divine mission. Do we have to? Remember, I'm immortal. Will it be okay if you drive back your car by yourself? Sure, Simon. It'll be okay. Okay. Thanks. Don't forget the pictures. Of course not. We'll send you two copies of everything we shot today. Mr. Green will autograph them for you. Thank you very much, ladies. Purvis, at the studio, 715. Make up. Right, Mr. Producer. Your tea, Mr. Green. This was taken when you first started. Remember? Son of the Sylvanian Will. Oh, yes, you are so good at that. There. Do you remember this one? Which we signed that? Oh, yes, do please. Of course I will. <laughs> Wonderful. Hey, goodbye. 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 Bye-bye. you to your room. It's all ready for you. The word fan had its origin in the United States in the year 1889. It simply meant an enthusiast. Lavinia and Elspeth Pfeiffer were great enthusiasts. And Purvis Green an actor who for years portrayed everything from vampires to werewolves, covering the whole spectrum of horror films, was the object of their enthusiasm. They collected data and photographs of him, until all that was left to collect was the man. 
Purvis Green, the actor, escaped from many a trap in his films. But this wasn't a movie. And this was to be his greatest test. Oh, and uh, by the way, uh, the word fan is derived from fanatic. And fanatics are rarely sane. Shakespeare's Prospero put it rather well. Now my charms are all o'erthrown, and what strength I have is mine own, which is most faint. Now it is true, I must be here confined by you. Purvis Green, I'm sure, would heartily endorse the sentiment. Without friends, without his writers, quite alone, and trapped as neatly as any fly that rises to the bait of its own ego. Awake, poor Purvis. with me. I am going to wrestle with the devil for his soul. Repent. Repent now. What the hell is this? He's not on the lot. He's not in his dressing room, Mr. Harris. Something must be wrong. He's never missed a call in 11 years. Never. Did you check his house? He didn't come home all night. His car isn't even there. Got a whole crew waiting around here. Haven't shot a foot of film. Mr. Johnson wants to see you. He's in the screening room. All right. Call all his girlfriends. Check all the bars. Call some of those kooks he hangs out with. Check the hospitals for find us. Where am I? You are being possessed of devils, Mr. Green. Hey, look, Simon! Simon, if this is one of your jokes, I don't like it. Now, get me out of here. This is no joke, Mr. Green. I will recreate morality through your body. Robert. On the contrary, it is you who are deranged. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. You will repent. I will win. I will. This has to arrive for you. I think you want to look at it. Uh, some strange passages here are marked about death and repentance. What's it mean? I don't know. Purvis get in yet? No. If anybody wants me, tell them I'll be back soon. Now, you've got the commissioner to listen to you, I'll never know. Never mind that. Can't you get a move on? You never give up, do you?
Mr. Harris. Not a pleasant surprise. I'm sorry to bother you. Nonsense. We see so little company. Won't you come in? Yes, sir. We have company. Mr. Harris. How wonderful. We have so few visitors. No more television now. Lavinia Nelspeth Pfeiffer, Detective Willis. Ladies? We haven't seen your show, I'm afraid. Mr. Willis is a real detective. My! Oh, I'm sorry. We've never seen a real detective. Do sit down. I'm investigating the disappearance of Purvis Green, the actor. Disappearance? Oh, such a lovely man. Oh, yes. uh, perfect manners. He left here yesterday afternoon, I believe. Yes. He drove away soon after Mr. Harris and the photographers left. Well, now that presents us with a bit of a problem, you see. We can't find him or his car. I don't understand. Oh, how exciting. A mystery on our own doorstep. <laughs> We're very worried about him. And as you ladies were the last to see him. Good heavens. He's disappeared and it's my job to try and find him. Well, is he no clue, however slight? Something like that. You must excuse my sister, Detective Willis. Uh, we get so little excitement here. Of course. Uh, Ellie, it's time. Oh, ten past three. Ten past already. It's a rule that she must have an hour's nap before we take tea. If I don't nap, I can't watch television. Well, we won't take up any more of your time. Dan, we'll see ourselves then. Uh, Mr. Harris, when you do catch up with Mr. Green, please remind him about autographing our pictures. Of course. Goodbye. Thank you for your help. I've never seen them before this started. What's the matter with you? Someone in your props department slipped up. What are you talking about? A Bible. The one on the table is the same as the one you first showed me with the passages marked. What? But why didn't you say something? Doc, come on, it's too pat. Look, I didn't set this up. This is not a performance. Now, please, go back. Let's assume you're telling the truth. I can't just bust in there and search the place. Yeah, but that Bible. There's no law against owning a Bible. I'd need a search warrant. Get one. It's not that easy. You've got to. Look, I'm really worried about Purvis. Take it easy. I'll work on it. Mr. Green? Mr. Green? Your friend has just left with a detective. They mean well. But soon they'll find out who we are. They'll be back. If you want to get out of there, remember a picture you once made? Trapdoor of the vampires? Trapdoor of the vampires.
Your Bible. It ties in. Check in there. Decency and honesty, and dead virtues, you, and the depravity as you represent, vampire, cannibal, creature. I'm an actor. An actor, I work in movies. There's a story. There is only one true story. Tears. Tears. In the words of the holiest of the holy, that is truth. Let others stand by and watch. See decency and morality trampled underfoot by men like you, evil men. I have waited all my life to bring you to repentance. Do you? Repent? Yes. Yes, I repent. Neil. Neil and take the word of the Lord. <laughs> Oh, 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 
Why did he die? Why did he die? Simon, down here. killed in 1937. The police got the two women, the Pfeiffer sisters. Looks like they killed him the same way. Some publicity stunt. Look, Simon, we arrested, convicted, and committed them both to the Kenwood Institute for the Criminally Insane, which burnt to the ground 11 years ago. And they thought all the inmates died in the fire. Detective Willis had to give up trying when they invalided him from the force. He'd complained of receiving letters on lavender notepaper that only he could see. Uh, the publicity photographs? Oh, uh, for some reason, they were fogged, every one of them. No one could understand it. Uh, uh, by the way, if any of you were thinking of starting a fan club for me, I'd prefer if you'd wait a bit. So, until next we meet, this is Anthony Quayle reminding you that there is a touch of evil in all of us. Good night. Pleasant dreams. <laughs>